Thank you, band, for waking us all up. That was marvellous. Uh, welcome to worship at Cardiff Canton Salvation Army. Welcome to those who are watching later on YouTube. We're going to continue our worship this morning by standing and singing together all creatures of our God and King. So the band will play an introduction and then we will sing all the verses, please. One of the questions which uh, Christine, my sister, asked the young people uh, last Sunday was, what do you want to be when you grow up? There will be a time, I guess, when we have all thought about that question. 
for some of us it was a very, very long time ago. And as we began to think about our ambitions, we would have people telling us how to achieve them. Do your homework, that, that will help. Uh, tidy your bedroom, get some GCSEs, maybe go to college or university. There were lots of things we need to do in order to achieve our ambition, in order to be what we want to be. Doing things is very important, but if we're not careful, our whole lives can become a struggle as different things to do compete for control of us. Psalm, Psalm 46 was written at a time when God's people were worried about all the things they had to do. Lots of different countries were fighting over the land that they lived on and it was difficult to know who to trust, who should they stand up to, who should they make deals with. And God says through the psalmist in Psalm 46, nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. There's lots of doing that uh, controls our lives sometimes, but ultimately, God wants us to be. God wants us to be still, be his people, be members of his family. And so we're going to think about that this morning. For now, we're going to sing together, mid all the traffic of the ways, turmoils without within, making my heart a quiet place and come and dwell therein. This is, this is a song really about being still amidst all the busyness, all the doing that surrounds us. So let us take these moments this morning to do, to be just that.
come see the desolations the Lord has wrought. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. Be still and know that I am God. Lord, as we reflect on those words of the psalmist, our, our minds straight away perhaps turn to war in lands across the world, especially in Ukraine. And we pray that somehow or other, the bloodshed will cease. That you will work in the minds of the leaders and in the hearts of those who carry arms and that somehow we will find an end to this aggression. But we thank you, Father, for the, the way that those words encourage us in the busyness of our lives and the worries of our lives to be still. Perhaps to have less of the doing and more of the being. And just now as we worship you, Lord, remind us that we are your children. We are citizens in your kingdom. We are your ambassadors, your disciples, your saints. And with all that being, Father, we will be equipped to do for you tomorrow and the day after and the day after that. Help us, Father God, to shine your light in this corner of our world. And bless us as we worship you this morning. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen amen now we listen with interest to the focus on our young people and then we'll have the singing company please Right, if there's any children who um, fancy giving these puzzles a bash, come down to the front to help Isabel. I can see two in the, in the foyer there, brilliant. So come down. There's, what we've got here is two IQ puzzles, okay? Today is National Puzzle Day, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some puzzles. Um, so whilst the children are doing these puzzles, so what you've got to do is there's two separate puzzles, so don't mix the pieces up. And you've got to get those pieces into the grid and make a flat rectangle. Okay? Off you go. Brilliant. So while they're doing that, you're not going to get away with it. You're going to have a couple of little puzzles to try and work out as well. Okay? Um, but what they've got there, they've got two I, um, uh, IQ puzzles, uh, different shapes, combinations. Oh, there we are. Got a picture on the screen there. So they're, they're, some of them are 3D, um, so they've got to try and fit them into the, um, the rectangular tray. So, while they have given that a bash, so, what did Adam say on the day before Christmas? What was that? I heard someone say something. There we go. It's Christmas Eve. Brilliant, see? It's a good one, isn't it? This is the level we're at, okay? It doesn't get any better than this. There we go. How are you getting on? No? 
Right, OK, how about we've got a couple of adults that I know love puzzles. So, Hilary and Bev, come forward. Maybe you can use your experience and age and wisdom <laughs> to give them a hand. See if you can, can help. So, on the box, it says that these um, are suitable from age six plus. So, everyone there is over the age of six, just, aren't you, just uh, Jonah? And apparently, there's over 120 different combinations where you can complete this. Um, so, next one. Uh, Noah most likely got milk from cows on the ark. What did he get from the ducks? Did somebody say quackers? Yeah, that's it. Quackers. Brilliant. Fabulous. Right, how are you getting on? There's what? Oh, hang on. Okay, then. Okay. That's not ideal. So, not ideal at all. I'm looking for somebody now that might possibly have the instructions for this to help you out a little bit. So, is there anyone here that is wise? studious, important, intelligent, that may be able to provide our young people here with the instructions. Stand up if you fit that bill. Studious, intelligent, wise. Adele, who else was it going to be? There you are. Is, do you want to go and get those, um, those instructions from Adele? Fab. So, see if they help. See if they help. The picture on the front. Uh, so work out which one's which. That's it. Fabulous. So next question. How did Moses make his coffee? He brews it. Of course. There you go. Even my husband thought that was a funny one. There we are. Fab. So have those instructions helped at all? Oh, they're still going. They're going to have to hurry up now because I haven't got any more questions for you. And my memory's rubbish. I had loads of them, but can't remember any of them. They're getting there. You're getting there? So even with the instructions, it's not easy, is it? <laughs> Right, so this is the second time now they've said there's a piece missing. There shouldn't be a piece missing, because I set it up before, and Isabel was with me, and there shouldn't be a piece missing. So, somebody must, be, um, must have stolen one. So I think we've got a thief in the building. There's got to be a thief. Got to be. So, everyone, can you have a little look under your tables? Under your table, sorry, under your chairs. Have a little look in your book, in your bags, in your pockets. Look in each other's pockets. I haven't got a problem with you looking in each other's pockets. And can the puzzle piece, puzzle piece thief, please stand up? Oh. Dare I make somebody anything about Swansea? No, no. I won't go there. I won't go there. Yai and Jones have stolen some pieces. Look at this. Brilliant. So Ezekiel and Bethan's team, brilliant. And Jonah and Isabel's team. Are you all done? Are you done? They're done. Round of applause for our puzzlers. <laughs> Fantastic. So this is just a fun little way to explain sometimes through our lives we're going to be faced with difficult situations that we may struggle with. Sometimes we can work these things out ourselves, and sometimes we need to search for the missing pieces or information to help. Sometimes we need a friend to help and advise us. Sometimes we need to pray about it and ask God for guidance. And sometimes we simply need to look at the instructions. So the last riddle for the answer to the most important instruction book of all. I'm something you might read when you're sitting in a pew. I contain two testaments, one which is old, one which is new, what am I? Bible. The Bible. Brilliant. Thank you.
Thank you, Singing Company. That was a lovely, lovely song. God is holy. And the amazing thing is that we can allow God's holiness to rub off on us. And he calls us his holy ones. Now we're going to listen to the announcements, please, and then we'll take up the offering. as follows. The flowers this morning are a gift from Rita Allen and we thank her very much for her lovely gift. On Wednesday this week our warm welcome space is uh, on of course um, between 11 and 2 and in, in addition to the other activities um, that are normally taking place there a craft group will start this Wednesday. There will be materials and tuition for those who would like it and if you are a more experienced crafter please bring your own creations along and join in the fellowship. I also have a notice from Hillary to say that um, if anyone has got a jigsaw roll mat that they don't need anymore they're going to start to use those in the welcome warm space as well so if you have one please let her know. Next week um, in this hall will be the YP annual and our leader we're very pleased to say is David Williamson. Uh, it's also the start of our preparations for self-denial appeal and the focus this year will be on the power of the Salvation Army's work with young people around the world. And finally we'd like to remember the members of our core family who are unwell or in need of our prayers at this time. Thank you for your attention. Shall we pray? Lord, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your presence around us every day. In this world there seems to be so much darkness, war, conflict, people that just don't get on with each other and we pray Lord that your peace will come into their lives. Lord, as we offer these gifts back to you, we also pray that we may bring light into your dark, your, the darkness of this world. Lord, we know that in the bleakest of times, one little light can shed so much light. So we pray that this church, these people, will be the light in this area. Amen. read for us our Bible reading from Luke's Gospel. This is the story that
that Jesus told about the publican and the Pharisee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Major David. The parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood up a distance. He would not even look up into heaven, but breath his beat his breath and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who will humble themselves will be exalted. Thank you very much, Kat. Now we're going to all sing together. Whoops. Teach me to dance. Not, not like that. Not by dropping Bibles. Right, teach me to dance. And we, you can't sing teach me to dance sat down, can you? So uh, we will stand up and sing this together. And you may even be tempted to jig around a bit as you sing. <laughs> Of course, dancing is a doing thing, but there's a sense in which that it, usually dancing is a, about expressing being, expressing joy or, or sorrow or loneliness. It, it's often about expressing. And uh, the second verse of that song talked about being in God's will. Uh, it, it talked about lots of being things, and that's what we seek to do today is to be in God's presence and to be in his will and to be his children. There, there's the second verse. Let all my movements express 
a heart that loves to say yes, a will that leaps to obey you. Let all my energy blaze to see the joy in your face. Let my whole being praise you. And now, the songsters are going to help us do that as they sing for us.
Thank you, songsters. That was lovely. Here is another passage of scripture. This is Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 12, starting to read at verse 9. Paul has spent a long time in Romans agonizing about what it means uh, to be one of God's people, um, following not being under the law, but being under grace, being uh, one of God's people through faith in Christ, and what it means for uh, his people, the Jewish people as well. And then right at the uh, conclusion, towards the end of Romans, Paul begins encouraging Christians in how their living with God should be. And see if you can separate out the, the being and the doing in these words of encouragement from Paul. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. And now we will sing again. Many are the things I cannot understand. A song almost perfectly designed for, for Paul's letter to the Romans because there are many things in Romans that people have been scratching their heads about for years. Uh, so maybe uh, it's, a, it's a little bit about Paul's letter to the Romans, but other things as well. So we'll remain seated as we sing this together, please.
And now we'll listen to the band, please. Thank you, band, for a reminder of those uh, lovely words. I can think of him in prayer. To be or not to be, that is the question, so wrote Shakespeare in Hamlet. In that play, Shakespeare's Hamlet, a fictional prince of Denmark, was wrestling with the idea of avenging his father's death and wondered whether he should go on living with these problems or just end it all in suicide. To be or not to be, to live or to die, that was Hamlet's question. It's a frame of mind which is far away from where God wants us to be. Despite the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the follower of Jesus Christ is called to celebrate life, to cling on to this gift which God has given and to share it with all of those others so gifted. But the six short words of that soliloquy raise a more abstract consideration for us this morning. To be or not to be, is that the question? Is being the really important thing about life? Or is life all about doing? To do or not to do? Is that the question? We've just gone through what is traditionally one of the busiest times of the year. Think about all the things you had to do at Christmas time. Put up the Christmas tree, decorate it, buy the presents, buy the food, write the Christmas cards, do the Christmas caroling, count the money, help at the carol services, be extra nice 
to people, open the Christmas presents, take the things back to the shops that don't fit, find the receipt, check what day the rubbish bags go out because of the holidays, stay up to see the new year in, make some New Year's resolutions, take all the decorations down, recycle the Christmas tree, start dieting and exercising so that we'll be ready for Christmas 2023. All the things we had to do. If you've got a diary, you may find some pages in them headed to-do list. I've never come across a diary with a to-be list. Of course, being is important. It's just that you wouldn't think it sometimes when looking at our busy lives. But God did command the Israelites and us to be. He commanded them to be holy. He told Joshua to be courageous, obedient and strong. And that parable Jesus told of the publican and the Pharisee, the Pharisee puffed up with pride stands on the street corner for all to see and hear and he prays out loud he addresses God but the way Jesus tells the story leaves us with the impression that this man isn't really talking to God he is just talking about himself so that others might be impressed then the spotlight is turned on the other man the one who felt his own unworthiness so deeply that he couldn't even look up. All he could say was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It's a familiar parable, and it's easy to get the main point. Luke even introduces it by telling us what the main point was. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable, Luke says. The Pharisee was clearly the one we're not supposed to be like. Here is the one who looked down on others and who was confident of his own righteousness. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. But what makes him so confident that he's not like them? The answer comes in the next line of his speech. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. That's why he thinks he is better than others, because of the things he does, because of his religious duties. Big deal, some might have said as they heard Jesus tell the story. And we can imagine Jesus nodding as he sees that they are getting the point. Of course, it's important to carry out our duties. Giving is good. Fasting is beneficial. But then, does any of it really make us better than others? Of course, no, is the answer to that. To be or not to be, to do or not to do? Which is the question? Notice that the publican doesn't mention anything he does. He simply recognises who he is. When we recognise before God who we are, then God can begin his work of transformation in our lives. And that's really what Jesus says in this story. That is his conclusion. This man the one who recognises who he is, rather than what he does, is the one who goes home justified before God. Of course, it's sensible to recognise that the best approach of life is to get the balance just right between doing and being. If you want to be a brain surgeon, you've got to do your study. If you want to be an Olympic gold medalist, you've got to do your training. If you want to be a cornet player, then you've got to do your practice. I think that's what Paul does here with his advice about Christian living in Romans chapter 12 that we read a few moments ago. He gets the balance just right. Being and doing go hand in hand. If there was one word which sums up his advice, 
it would be love. Love is a word which is loaded with both being and doing ideas. People talk about being in love. They sing songs about being in love. But in order for love to mean anything, you've got to do love. And I don't mean the kissy-kissy sort of love. In fact, the Greek word that Paul uses here, agape, denotes a selfless, non-sexual kind of love, the sort that exists between a parent and child. This is the kind of love which Christians are encouraged to demonstrate in all of their relationships. We have to do love by making sure that our actions are consistent with our proclamations. When we look at Paul's advice to the Romans, we see that intermingled with all the things which Paul encourages us to do are challenges to be. First, the Christian's to-do list. And as, as, as I look through all the to-dos in Romans chapter 12, I'm struck by how similar it is to things Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. Paul says, here are the things to do, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, honour one another above yourselves, keep your spiritual fervour, keep serving God, share with God's people who are in need, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another, do not take revenge. They're all the do's. Now here come the things we're called to be. There were a couple of stray ones in verses 10 and 11, but the essence of being is found in verse 12. Be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, be faithful in in prayer. How can we be those things? How can we be joyful, patient, faithful? The answer is by doing love rather than just feeling love. Go back to Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount again. Love your enemies. Do it. Turn the other cheek. Offer your coat, Jesus says. In fact, God's intention is that we do love even if we don't feel like it. Love your neighbour. Do it. Recognise that those you might think you have very little in common with are actually your neighbours, just as the Samaritan might have had little in common with the mugging victim in that other parable Jesus told. To be or not to be. To do or not to do. Like the publican, we need to be people who recognise who we are. Dismantle those barriers of pride so that God can do his transforming work in our lives. But let us also be people who practice love, who do love, rather than just feel it, even if we don't feel it then little by little God will make us into a new people. We will be part of his new creation. prayer 
Father God, we thank you for all that you give us to be your children. We pray, Lord, that as we enjoy this next week ahead of us, that during it we will constantly be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen.